morning and Kuzambu to cheer Mr. Jampa, Rinpoche and all the people here. Uh, I'm going to speak on the crucial techniques and object of purification in gener generation stage in the practice of deity yoga. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, second the thought of my colleague, uh, co-speaker, Mr. Joseph, that we are so grateful to our majesty and uh, we Bhutanese believe him as uh, the Dharma king and uh, we worship him as uh, everything. And um, because we, by our first hand, we know that how much he is caring for his subject uh, how much enlightened he is to lead us. So we are really grateful to our majesty and the entire monarch. Uh, uh, then uh, let me pay homage to my root teacher. <laughs> So Deity Yoga is Deity Yoga is a very, very advanced, profound and fast uh, practice in Vajrayana Buddhism. That's why uh, Tsongkhapa in his Ngagrim says Deity Yoga is the only practice that differentiates Vajrayana Buddhism from the other schools of Buddhism. And this uh, Deity Yoga practice is prescribed uh, through the tantras. In, uh, there are many different tantras, many ver different versions, many different categories, but commonly and uh, popularly accepted uh, is that four tantras, Kriya Tantra, Charya Tantra, Yoga Tantra, and Anuyoga Tantra. And uh, this uh, Deity Yoga practice is uh, done through two advanced practices called the Utpatti Krama generation or creation stage, and then the Sampanna Krama, uh, which is the completion stage. So here, I'm, again, these two are very, very vast uh, subject, so I'm only going to speak about the generation stage. In the generation stage also we have lots and lots of different practices. I'm going to speak on the visualization techniques in the uh, uh, generation stage. Visualization technique is all over in the Vajrayana Buddhist practices. And uh, visualization here means not only working with the visual object, visual sense organ, and visual consciousness, but it is more about working with the mind. And uh, so visualization practice, we have two different uh, approaches. We, uh, the first one is a gradual approach and then uh, uh, instantaneous approach. In the gradual approach, here also we have, because we have four different tantras and many different ways to do the visualization in practice, I just pick up on one tantra, which is uh, from the yoga tantra, visualization with three rituals, Choga Sunke. The first ritual is the ritual of visualizing the seed syllable of uh, the enlightened speech, Sun Yidu Kev Choga. At the beginning of the uh, practice, uh, we visualize the seed syllable. Seed syllable, syllable is, uh, uh, sometimes it is a single sound uh, or multiple sound, but usually it's single sound and a single letter or combination of a few letters. If you look at the screen, that is three, the seed syllable of uh, Afalokiteshwara. This is single sound but it's combination of five letters. First, the root letter is ha, and then ra, a, e, and visard. So this is combination of five letters creating one single sound. 
Seed syllable is the uh, condensed formula of the uh, deity and its mantra. At the beginning, why we visualize seed syllable is that to create more stronger, more stable concentration because this has lesser details and then later we have to go in many details, creating many features, uh, postures of the uh, deity. So that's why it, it is uh, beneficial for at the beginning to visualize the seed syllable. And the second um, ritual is the ritual of visualizing the emblem of enlightened mind. To Chaksim Kevi Choga, every deity has its own uh, emblem. Here it's the Vajra. Vajra is the emblem of the uh, Vajra Satwa. So after visualizing the seed syllable, then seed syllable transforms into the uh, Vajra, which is the emblem. Sometimes it is uh, marked by another seed syllable. Sometimes it's the, only the uh, emblem. Then uh, through that emblem, uh, em emanating lots of rays of light, reaching to the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas in the ten direction, offering with different kinds of offering, and then uh, the lights returning back to the uh, seed syllable and the <coughs> emblem. So the third ritual is ritual of visualizing the entire enlightened body, body of the uh, deity. Here now the uh, emblem transforms into the full-fledged body of the uh, uh, deity, the chosen deity. So <clears throat> in the visualizing this full body also, uh, depending on what you are, what practice you are doing. So sometimes it is single, uh, single figure. Sometimes it's, it's uh, embraced with its consort. Uh, many sometimes it's multiple figures with uh, multiple retinue and then in the visualization we have two different visualizations uh, first one is uh, called the front visualization front visualization one self remaining is as as the ordinary being uh, then the visualize the deity at the crown of the practitioner so that is one way, and, and there is another way for front visualization, visualizing the deity uh, in the space above, uh, but in front, uh, the practitioner and the deity facing towards each other. And uh, another one is the self-visualization, uh, oneself, the practitioner visualizing oneself as the chosen deity. Uh, exchanging the identity of ordinary being to the, uh, uh, the identity of the enlightened being, the deity. So in whatever visualization, front visualization or the self-visualization, these three uh, crucial key factors are very, very important. So first one is the vivid feature, recollection of purity, second one, and then third one is the divine pride. First, uh, vivid feature is that whatever visualization you may do, that visualization should be very, very accurate, as clear as possible, and then as precise as possible. Uh, in the practice manuals, we have that, it says that uh, the, uh, the deity, visualized deity, should be as clear as the reflection of moon in the st still water or uh, beautiful rainbow in the clear sky. And the second key feature is the recollection of the purity. So whatever features uh, the deity may have, all these features are uh, uh, reflection of uh, enlightened qualities. For example, if the deity is one-faced deity, then that means all dhammas are realized as one, the concept of one taste. Three faces means three enlightened bodies, two arms, method and 
wisdom forms before immeasurable thoughts, two legs, shila and samadhi, the moral conduct and the concentration, cross-legged means realization of the equality of, of samsara and nirvana. So these are more details. And uh, uh, so again here in the re recollection there are three more uh, very important aspects. The reflecting on the uh, meanings of the features of the deity, it's called purity of the nature processor, uh, male and female deity, Chuchen Thadathamitakpa. And the second one is uh, the purity of, of uh, Great blissful awareness around the Deshing uh, Itapa. Because I'm talking about the generation stage, generation stage is preparation for the completion stage. In the completion stage, we have the practice of chakras, bindu, nadi, and all that. So, uh, generation practice prepares your body. Hence, the body becomes more lighter more blissful, so it is called the purity of great blissful awareness. And then the third one is called the purity of uh, suchness, dharmata, chuni pijini ditapa. Whatever uh, practice or visualization one may do, that is emptiness, but that, empty, that is appearance, but that appearance is not different from uh, the emptiness, so union of appearance and emptiness is called the purity of suchness. And the third key feature is divine pride. This uh, feature is the most important feature in the uh, visualization practice. Without divine pride, visualization practice can be just a play of imagination. Then what is divine pride? Divine pride is the strong, unshakable confidence that if you visualize oneself as the deity, then you need to have that stable confidence, strong confidence that I am the deity, enlightened deity itself, not the ordinary being. And uh, yes, and the second approach is in instantaneous visualization. So in the instantaneous visualization, uh, you don't need to go through all these long process of visualizing the uh, seed syllable and creating the em emblem of the deity. You just, after uh, seeking refuge and uh, cultivating bodhicitta, you immediately arise yourself as the chosen deity. So that is uh, instantaneous visualization. That is called kechitonke. And the object of purification. Generally, in the gen uh, generation stage, the object of purification is the egocentric experience, the strong clinging of I. On the mind and body, we cling as I. So that is the common uh, general uh, object of purification in uh, generation stage. Specifically, we have two, three different uh, uh, key features that purifies the three different aspects of an ordinary being. An ordinary being will have first ordinary aspect, feeling ordinariness, and then second one is the appearance aspect, and the third one is uh, clinging aspect. So the first key feature Vivid feature purifies the ordinary aspect. Uh, ordinary uh, aspect, uh, because we feel ourselves as ordinary, whatever we see, whatever we hear, everything as ordinary. Now the vivid feature uh, purifies this. And then the second one, the uh, purity of recollection of purity purifies the appearance aspect. Again, whatever we see, whatever we experience, we cling to that as it appears. But now here, the recollection of purity uh, replaces that feeling. And then clinging aspect, whenever we have this clinging on the 
mind and body as I, there is very strong, uh, strong graphs. So the ding dong, and then the uh, divine pride purifies that. Divine pride also has similar character, uh, uh, very strong confidence that uh, the visualized deity is myself. Visualize, uh, let me skip this. And then visualization of Samaya Sattva. Here again we have three different beings, Samaya Sattva, Jiana Sattva and Samadhi Sattva. Samaya Sattva is that in the front visualization or, or the self-visualization, whatever you visualize, that is called Samaya Sattva because uh, the enlightened being does not, does not have any kind of shape, form or shape, but because of their pledge, commitment during their practice, so they appear as the visualized form. The Jnana Sattva is the true nature of that deity, the true, uh, true being, true enlightened aspect of that uh, being. So this uh, does not have any form or shape, but after visualizing the Samaya Sattva, then the practitioner summon this uh, enlightened nature of that true, uh, that deity and merges with the Samaya Sattva. And then the last one is the Samadhi Sattva. Samadhi Sattva, as indicated by the term itself, Samadhi means concentration. After uh, creating the Samaya Sattva, uh, summoning the Jnana Sattva, the practitioner uh, visualizes uh, the seed syllable encircled by the mantra at the heart of the sam Samaya Sattva. During the practice, uh, one, when one starts chanting, reciting the mantra, uh, keeps the focus of concentration on that. That is called sam uh, Samadhi Sattva. Okay, let me skip this. And the benefits of, uh, uh, benefits of uh, doing the gener generation or the visualization practice, Mm, uh, increasing longevity, sound health, good lifestyle, and uh, most importantly, that enfeebles, enfeebles the egocentric experience, the I, the ego. So those are all indications of uh, progress in the path, and I think now I'm done. Thank you very much for bearing with me.